Hello everyone, now uh, welcome back. In this video, we're going to create an Amazon VPC and we'll be looking into different options that need to be known. So let's go ahead and start. So initially to access this particular console, go to the services. And here you can see there is a networking and content management. So here you can see VPC, which is isolated cloud resource. So let's click that. So here uh, we have default uh, VPCs in these regions. So let's click uh, create VPC. And you can see we have six subnets and one uh, route table and one internet gateway and so on. So these are different services that uh, uh, we have by default whenever uh, we create an account. So let's go ahead and create one VPC here. And uh, here you see we have different options. You can select either VPC only or VPC or more. So whenever you select uh, VPC and more, you have uh, you know extra options. So you can select these options as well whenever you create more. So for example, you don't require any subnets and so on. You can just create VPC and you can just add it. So coming to the options, I have also written a blog, uh, you know, a post related to this in my Instagram channel as well. So just to save time, uh, I'm creating this uh, post so that uh, you can know more about this theoretical knowledge uh, in my Instagram channel as well as uh, my Medium blog. So that is what it is. So I'll be keeping this in the description for your reference. So do check that out. And uh, coming to the video, let's go ahead and create a VPC only in this case. So we can just create a sample. And here you have two options. So the first one is manual and the second one is IPAM. So if you see, the IPAM is nothing but uh, IP address manager. So if you create a pool, so here you can create a pool. So if you have that pool, you can select that pool and add the net mask. So this is how you can create. So you can just go to, you know, VPC IP address manager and go to IPAMS and create one. So this is how we can create it. So since we don't have uh, any, we are not going to create and we'll be going with a manual one. So let me add that and dot zero dot zero dot zero slash 16. So once it is done, so I'm not adding any IPv6. So coming to the tenancy, we have two options, default and dedicated. So a default is nothing but like uh, you are sharing the resources, whereas dedicated is like uh, the hardware is fixed to you. So that is uh, what are the differences. So I can just keep it as default. And if you want to add any tags, you can add or else you can just leave it as default and create it. So these are the options that you will be having whenever you create VPC only. So let's go ahead and create one and then we'll uh, go to the next options. So you see, we have no subnets and uh, we call the default route table, which has been attached to this particular uh, VPC. So go back and uh, refresh. So this is the sample that we have created now. So click this sample and let's say you want to add more uh, subnets to it. So later on, you want to add uh, more subnets and uh, you want to uh, you know, add a different route table to this one. So you see, we have uh, a route table which has been created. So let's see what is in the route table. You see our address and local. So right now we don't have any internet access. So for example, if you want to create an internet access, how can you do that? So just edit the tables and you need to also have uh, internet uh, gateway. So which we don't have right now. So I'll just show you the process. So here you can just click Internet Gateway and you can select one. So you can go to the Internet Gateway and add one gateway and save changes. So that is how we can uh, give access to this one. And uh, coming to the subnets, if I go back to subnets here, let's create one. So let me show you that as well. As well. So create one and you can create a route table and uh, add the relevant VPC that you want uh, this route table to be attached. So that is how we can attach this. Go back and uh, similarly the subnets as well. So these are the different subnets that we have, which has been attached to the default VPC. So create subnet and uh, add the sample that we have just created and name the you know subnet. You can just add the subnet. So in this case, uh, you yeah, know just uh, say as sample subnet and uh, availability zone. You can select the relevant availability zone or you can just add it as uh, 
let me add uh, the number. Create a subnet. So we have created a sample subnet. Let's refresh it. And if you go to your VPC, you see we have a sample subnet which has been attached to this particular route table. So you can also create an internet gateway and you can attach that to this particular route table so that uh, you'll be accessing uh, to that internet. So which you can create from here. So right now we have the uh, internet gateway. So to create an internet gateway, you can just create it and create an internet gateway. So that is how simple it is to create an internet gateway. So go back. So I'm just going uh, showing you the options in this video. Uh, down the line, I'll uh, add more content related to this. So if you go to VPC and uh, if you go to this uh, main route table, select this, sure you can see we have this access. So this is what uh, we are going to create uh, for the new one or to get this internet access. Just wanted to show you that one. And uh, so if I go back, what else is remaining? So let's go and create and let's see these options. So you see like a uh, number of availability zones that you require, whether it's three or four. So you can see we have a preview or a structure. So you select one availability zone. It's just like, you know, you have two subnets. Since we have selected a subnet somewhere, there you go. So if you select zero, we have zero subnet, zero route tables. So can, this is nothing but, you know, uh, VPC only that we are going to create. So if I select one availability zone and this will be the default one and let's say public uh, access. So this is nothing but, you know, uh, it, it is available uh, publicly. So you can see the definition here. So use public subnets for the web application that need to be publicly access uh, accessible over internet. Whereas this one, uh, where is that? Yeah, this one, it is private. So if you click here, you see use private subnet to secure backend resources that don't need public access. So based on your needs, you can select uh, the relevant one and similar to the NAT gateway and VPC endpoints, which will be talking uh, more about this in the further videos. So these are the, the, the extra options that uh, we'll be getting whenever you select VPC and more. And you can also see the structure that uh, can be used. So, yep, that's it for now. I, I hope you guys understood the concept of today's video. If you have liked the video, please click the like button below. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and please share the video. Thanks, everyone.